Hey, hello, and welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to try to get our first freighter. And often enough, you will actually already have a freighter while you do the quest chain that we were doing before, the whole Artemis Apollo slash null quest chain. Because as you warp from system to system, at some point you will be, well, let's call it, invited to partake in a freighter defense. You'll see a freighter or a fleet that is being attacked by pirates, and if you help them out, then in some cases they will offer for you to take over the fleet. So that's basically what we're going to try to do. I'm going to get in my starship, and I'm going to start warping, and as soon as, as I encounter a fleet in distress, then I'll take it from there. Alright, so what we do is we open the galaxy map. We are in Salamat. Let's see what's nearby. Uh, yeah, we can try this system. I'm not sure if I've been there yet. Either way, we're going to start warping. Nothing here, so we keep going. So while I was warping, we actually received a distress signal from a planet or a settlement in distress. That is going to be the next episode, where I will talk more about uh, the settlement where you can become overseer. Ironically enough, it's in a system with the black hole, so that should be very interesting. But this episode, I really wanted to try to get that freighter, so I'll just keep on warping. And here we go. So while we're warping, you already see the fleet. They are being attacked by pirates. We have to kill the pirates. It can be tricky, because you do not want to shoot at the freighter or the fleet themselves. Pirates tend to fly in front of him, hoping that he will shoot at the fleet. Or one of their ships, because at that moment... They're not going to be happy with you, and the Sentinels will be hunting you down. So this is actually a big, pretty big attack. Uh, I think it was a total of eight. So we have to kill a whole bunch more. I always am super careful, I don't want to be hitting the other ones. The Pirates, you can recognize by their red, pinkish beams, or exhausts. But there's also, for example, sometimes friendly fighters from the fleet. And they can be recognized by usually a green color. Let's recharge the shield. There we go. There's three left. You can see that in the right bottom. And these are the last two. Should be the last one. And then we should be getting an incoming message from the captain from the fleet. And he's inviting us on board. There it is. Apparently a Corvax fleet. Mostly gibberish. Okay. Okay, and then you can actually see one of this. Also, in most cases on your head-up display in the bottom, the main freighter is denoted by this purple rectangle. So, that's usually the one where you want to go. Now, the thing about freighters is that they are similar to starships and uh, for example, multi-tools. They come in different variations and gradations, if that's a word. That goes from C down to B to A to S. 
the difference is, is that at this point in the game, you cannot upgrade your freighter. While well, you can upgrade your multi-tool for some nanites, and you can upgrade your starship, and also for some nanites or whatever. But with a freighter, that is not possible yet. So you're kind of stuck with what you're going to get. But it's often advice when you get your first freighter rescue mission, the one that we just now did, that you actually check it out and skip um, taking control of it. Because then you can get that fight, as far as I know, I looked into it, um, this fight will pop up uh, every five warps as long as you have been in the game three hours. It doesn't need to be that you have all logged in for three hours consecutively. You can just split it up between several days. But as soon as the game sees that you had a previous fight three hours game time before, and you make your fifth warp, then right around that point you should be getting another rescue the freighter mission. What a lot of people do, they skip this first freighter because they really want to go for an S, because there's, there's really, it's very difficult to upgrade it. The only way to upgrade the freighter is by literally getting or buying a new one while you already have one. So if I take control of this freighter right now, where we're at right now, then I have no way to upgrade this to an S. Um, we can actually see which one it is before we even speak with the captain, so you can use your scanner. And we have a freighter C-class, which is kind of normal for the first mission. I don't think you can get an S-class for the first mission. But uh, it's a C-class, 26 plus 14. So it's, 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 a pretty, it's a pretty poor freighter. It's as low as they can get, I think. For the purpose of this series, um, I'll just take it. And uh, I'll just kind of show you what we can do with it. Alright, so we get on board. It's not our freighter yet. We have to speak to the captain, who's always on the blue side. An admiral. We'll inspect it. So there you go, C-Class. Really very, very limited. We'll just claim it. Okay. So, you're going to do some missions uh, to explore the freighter and see how things work. So, the first one is to expect our fleet. And you do this here. So, in the center of this freighter, let's call it the main room, the bridge, whatever you want to call it, you have several options. You can inspect your fleet and squadron. Uh, you can warp, because with your freighter and your fleet, as you build it up, you can actually warp as well, which is awesome. And you can upgrade and control certain part of the freighter. Now it wants us to actually check out our fleet, so we'll do that. So the fleet comes in two, uh, consists of two parts. First, it consists of your squadron. I can click on it. Which is our fighter squadron. We don't have any fighter pilots just yet. So in order to open that, let me spend 800 nanites. So now we can actually recruit fighter pilots. Um, basically anybody that you encounter, any NPC, you can ask them to join you as a fighter. But of course you want to be looking for very skilled fighters for your fleet. They are very awesome because even when you go to another system and your fleet is, let's say, in system A and you travel to system B and you're attacking sentinels or interceptors, then your fighters will pop up there to help you. It's really very fun. Okay. So the other part of the fleet is the fleet itself, which consists of frigates. And they come in different shapes and forms. So you have trade frigates, uh, you have combat frigates, exploring, um, industrial frigates. Uh, you have all around support frigates. And what you can do with them is you can send them on expeditions where they can bring home either units, goods, or salvage modules or whatever. So that's what this guy is for. And we're going to speak to him. He's a guy that uh, every day presents you with a number of missions, expeditions that are available. And you can then send one, your ships there. You can send one ship, more ships. Uh, I think you can have up to 30 frigates. Don't uh, hold me to that number, but I think it's 30. Um, but every day you can do five missions. So you can send a whole bunch as a group on one single mission if you want to. Before you do that, you need to build a control room where you can actually see your 
fleet as or your frigates as they go on an expedition. So every freighter looks different when you get them. This actually has a part that is outside. Very interesting. So this is the area where we can expand and build certain structures within the freighter. And uh, as soon as you do that, you realize that your base is on the planets. You will hardly ever go there unless it's to pick up resources or do certain smaller missions or things. Because most of the time, you want to spend on your freighter because it's so convenient, so handy. We're going to expand a little bit. Because we have nothing here. This is actually a freighter that, as far as I can see, has... Maybe there's something here on this one. Okay, so we have one storage container. Very similar to the ones that we built on the base. This is storage container zero. Then this is a stellar extractor core. We'll all get to that later. But... Yes, the cool thing is, every freighter, um, if you play several maps or several games, so you see that every freighter that you get for the first time is different. I, uh, what is this? Oh, this is actually allows me to summon my exocrafts in the system where my, my freighter is. So that can be very handy. You can see little uh, depictions, little icons for the exocraft. And we have another stellar extractor core. To, to keep it very simple for now, the Stellar Extractor Core will passively, you don't have to do anything, it will extract resources from the system where it's in, um, I, I believe it's from the star, and it depends on what color star it is, uh, and what resources it can get from there, so it depends on the system. Either way, uh, let's keep it simple, we're going to build a simple base, so we're going to expand here, so now we have a whole different build menu, uh, you can... Uh, several options for corridors so you have t-junction l-junction straight uh, you can research more of this uh, with glass with windows you can look outside if you want to uh, bulkhead door um, okay then we have several rooms that we can build he wants us to build a fleet command room for every single expedition that you send out you need a single command room so if you send five expeditions yes you need five command rooms. Uh, you can bring your staff on board of the freighter so this is for the scientist, this is for the overseer, this is the galactic trade room where we can actually sell and buy goods from the galactic market. Uh, this is the cultivation chamber where we can grow our plants, and this is the farmer's desk room, whatever you call it. And then you can see here all the storages, I'm going over them to get rid of the exclamation mark, but it makes it easier for me to keep track whenever I have a new structure I can build. That I can see right away, hey, there's a new explanation mark. And then uh, I can see what it is. Alright, so this is a refiner room, very handy. Uh, this is for the Exocraft guy, and this is for the weapons guy. So this is for the two Vikings. The refiner room is very handy because it's a really large refiner. And also, it doesn't require refueling or any power. It takes the power straight away from the freighter. And that makes it so much easier. Alright. Now, most of these structures, they require silver to be built. And that's why I always, whenever I play a map, I always make sure that my characters have a lot of silver before we get the freighter, because you don't want to be standing here with 100 silver and then be like, oh crap, I can't build anything. Alright, so we're going to build a corridor. It expands beautifully. Gotta say that building in this game is very um, smooth and uh, straightforward. So we'll make a split here. So that doesn't allow you to make another straight here, because this is already a T. So we'll just... Um, one here. One there. I'll just uh, build certain things for just for example reasons. Uh, the fleet command room... I'm going to do that actually on the left here. I don't want to get too distracted, of course. And there's a limit, you cannot simply build into space like 500 quarters in a row. It, it knows where the boundaries are of your of your freighter and uh, it will act accordingly, so it will tell you, hey, that's the limit. So, let's see. What a big hallway we built there. You don't want to be running too far. So I'll leave a space open here. Yeah, you can do it this way. That way. 
so there's something on that side. Was that uh, where we were outside? Okay. That way, that way. Okay, time for control room. Complete command room, I should say. They are interconnected. Very likely wasn't the smartest thing to do. I didn't know I was that close to the storage. So, we'll just delete that one. And we'll build a fleet command room on this side. Because we have to put down all our storage units there, so I want to have them all together. Okay, that's one. Two. You don't have to build five of them, but I will do that simply in advance, in case we send out five expeditions at some point. Alright, this allows us to check up on the fleet and see what's going on. Right now, there's no fleet on, a, on any expeditions. We downloaded the blueprints to make actually fuel that we're going to need to send those fleets or frigates on their expeditions. So when you click tap, you have now tap for the freighter. And they gave us one. Uh, this is actually 200 tons. So we're going to craft one of the smaller ones and one of the medium ones. These require a lot of um, dehydrogen. You'll run out of it real fast. So whenever you're on a planet and you see those blue crystals, just grab them. Because you're going to need a lot of them. Grab one more of those. Grab, grab. Okay. So, I'll first do this little mission chain here. So now we want to talk to him. Because now we have a fleet command room and he says, Ah, now we can send uh, your ship out. Uh, I forgot what we had. Okay, well, let, let's see what we have. This one actually shows us the ship. We have a trade vessel. Ah, that is actually good. So we'll just send this one. You return. Requires 50 tons. Uh, so level 1 star mission. Our fleet is a it's a pretty good one. He has 23 in trading. It's a 2 star. Is basically the way we value that. And now we can launch expedition. Ah. So he's very happy. Now we go back to our fleet command room. And now we can actually speak to the fleet commander. While they're on the expedition. There's really not much they're going to say, but uh, it's still fun to watch. Let's see, where did the... Uh, okay, there. You can actually see the frigate here in the image. That's the one on its way. First we have to make the connection. We speak with the commander. And he will give you an update. It's a, it's a very short expedition, done in an hour. So you can abort the expedition if you want to, but uh, I'll just do uh, leave. Perfect. So that is taken care of. And at some point, you can really get lost in your freighter if you have a lot of hallways and rooms. That's why I usually have something like an open floor plan. Make sure I don't get lost and confused. Uh. Okay. Well... We have already our place for our storage. I'm not a big fan of this open air space thing, but... Uh... Okay, so... I'll expand on this storage first. Storage room zero we already have. We have one. Hmm. Normally, because of my OCD ness, I would remove this one and put it in a spot with the other one, nicely organized. The thing is, I don't know this structure yet. It's already standard on this freighter, but I cannot rebuild it in case I would demolish it. I have to research this first, and I, I don't have that yet, so I will uh, hesitantly work my way around this one. All right. Okay, so I put down my nine storage units. 
It's the biggest disorganized layout ever. They're all here, and they connect to the the normal storages on the on the planet on the bases. So I can access this, and here's all the goodies. The benefit is that while I'm standing in my construction area, if I click on tab, and let's say I have something in my access suit that I want to drop off, for example this one, uh, let's actually use this condensed carbon, I can click on the X and I can tell it to go to the storage container on the freighter. And if it all works well, then it would normally put that in the storage container where it belongs. It doesn't, I've noticed that it doesn't always work. And this should actually be zero. And I'm not sure why that is, but sometimes it doesn't work. I didn't have any in here, so that's why it also put it in zero. If it doesn't see it in your current storage, it will automatically put it in zero. I'm not sure if I can actually show this what I mean. Let's see, we have uh, dioxide here. I'll take half a stack of dioxide. So now I want it to show up in container 1. X. Uh, let's see if it goes back in there. It should go. There you go. Because the system sees that you already have it stored. And now we'll try, or we'll try to put it in the same storage bin. The freighter itself also has storage. Just like a starship. Right here. For example, if you harvest any plants on the freighter, it usually shows up here. Anything that comes back from an expedition, any goodies that they find, it'll show up here. And you can do it the same way. You click on X. X. And it will try to find... I've actually put this on my suit. In order to warp, this is something else that we have to work on later, but uh, we can do that with a warp cell. Um, I don't have much left, actually. So only 50%. Okay. The great thing about the freighter is, is that if I want to do build anything, let's say I need to build this, I need, uh, for example... No, that's not a good example. A cobalt to build this. I don't have any cobalt in my bags, but if I click E, it will build it because it sees the whole inventory of the freighter. So the moment you want to restock something, you can just hover over it. And as long as you have an inventory stored in your freighter somewhere, it, you can craft it right on that spot, and that's why the freighter is so awesome. Alright, so we made our storage. Uh, just keep it very simple. And now I have to make sure that I don't get confused where I am. Because I'm going to get confused. Okay. So, they set it up symmetrically, so here's the other one. It's kind of in the way. Very annoying. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to build, for example... Uh, yeah, let's uh, first build this guy's room. So we can actually summon the farmer here. If it allows... It actually put it outside. I'm not sure if you see this. Because this unit has a wall stand as part of this unit. So I cannot even get there. So I have to kind of work my way around it. Which is not too difficult. That's what I thought. But no, it's actually saying that that is not working. Let's get those walls over. See, it wants me to remove that wall. Okay, there we go. Again, it's not pretty. This is not a farmer. We have a gag farmer. I'll summon him. There he is. And he's probably living the dream. So, I'll uh, build some more cultivation. It's not really essential. The thing is, you can put two plants in here. You can later research cultivation rooms that have more plants than two. Um, I can try to. I'm not sure if I can. Let's try some gamma weed. Uh, okay. And some fungal fossils here. Farms have enough. Okay. All right. So. Uh. Yeah, so ultimately you build all these rooms, you research more. Uh, right now there's not much point to bring these guys on board. Refiner room is very handy. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, you can do that at a later date. The only other thing I wanted to show right now is um, how to expand on your fleet of frigates. 
Because right now we have one. He's already out. And the other thing I wanted to show is this little upgrade thing. So you can uh, research different structures. So this is stuff that helps you with your expeditions, um, with your warp drive. But these are the modules themselves that you can research. And there's a lot of stuff that you can research. Uh, one of the most important ones is this one. The teleport chamber. Because often enough you can teleport always onto your freighter. But if you don't have the teleport chamber, you cannot teleport off. And in order to research this, you need a salvaged frigate module. It's not the same as the one that you can find from Barrier Technology on planets. But for example, your expeditions can sometimes find salvage frigate modules. Or you can run missions for those mission agents in the star, uh, spaceships. And some of them have a reward that gives you a salvage frigate module. And there are other ways to get them. But yeah, until I have one of those, I cannot research this teleport chamber. So in order for me to get off my ship, uh, freighter, I have to go to my spaceship. So I quickly want to show you that. Um, the other thing here, this is my ship. This is very similar to a space station. So often enough you will have um, NPCs or guests that are simply landing on your freighter, traders that you can uh, talk to. and Now you can also offer them a position in your squadron because we have one open slot. In order to expand your fleet... Woo. Okay. You need to be able to fly better. But in order to expand your fleet, you need to find frigates that are usually with different fleets that are open for recruitment. And you can see that in my compass on top. You see those two little green icons. And you can see them now in my, my view there. Those are frigates that are recruitable, as it says. And they come to... And various forms and si sizes ranging from C all the way down to S. They cost money. If you want to recruit an S class or an S skilled frigate, then you're paying at least 8 million units to get one of those. They can level up as they run missions. They need to run a lot of missions before they go from C to B for example. But the way this works is you fly close to them they will automatically start hailing you and you start yakking with them and you can then see what you're dealing with. Judging from the look of this frigate, this is going to be an explorer. Let's see what it is. It's Class C. Uh, Exploration 16. I always look for frigates, no matter what role they play, that have at least four in combat. So that they can defend themselves in case it's going to be necessary. So this one has no combat skills. 16 Exploration uh, would cost us 1.6 million. So I'm not too interested in that one. And there was another one. This is one of the parts of the game where I think they could improve it. Because it's very difficult to see who you spoke to. Now I can say, well, I, I know I spoke to this guy and there's another one. You can see the one on the top. But some fleets actually have like five, six of these frigates that want to talk to you. And it's, it's really difficult to keep track of who you spoke to. Okay, so this is not an explorer. I check. Oh, yeah, they have the little talk. The support. Okay, great. Horrible numbers. So we don't care about that one. Okay. So what you do is, you look at your map. The map on your sh the heads-up display on the bottom. You see that purple icon. There, there's a fleet. In that case, it's actually very likely my own freighter. But what you can do is... Um, we're going to warp to another system. Usually there's always a fleet there. Seven light years away. Ah, what a beautiful system. So again, this is a system where we have that settlement of distress that we are going to visit next time. Now, we see the black hole here on our heads-up display, and the fleet... Well, there's a fleet right... Well, right next to it, I wouldn't say, but... And there's a fleet warping in. Which is brilliant. There's actually a whole... And now you see the green dots popping up on the screen. It's 
So we'll just fly here. And again, for the sake of this playthrough, I'll just pick something. As long as it's not horrific. Okay, so these are the Baikin. Ah, this one looks actually really, really nice. 27 for C-Class. Costs us 2 million. We'll get it. And he will be now. Uh, he's going to position himself with our fleet and we can send him out on an expedition. Alright. Now, the system has a space station. And I'm hoping that I can show the last part of this. The actual recruitment of a fighter. So yeah, when you're now maneuvering among these fleets, you get constantly these messages from these recruitable frigates. You kind of have to keep an eye on that, and kind of distinguish which one, uh, which message, message is important and which one isn't. Because they all yak a lot. There we go. And now we're going to stand here, waiting for a ship, and there it is. This is actually very interesting, because we fly in our original ship, and this is a battle fighter class. <laughs> Instead of recruiting him, I might actually buy his... Nah, I don't like the looks of this one. Looks are important in this game. So, we'll react to him, and he's open to trading, and also now we have option 3, recruit life or squadron. So we're going to do that. He is actually a, an A-class pilot. And uh, his damage potential is pathetically weak. Um, for the sake of this playthrough, we'll just recruit him. He disappears. So does the ship. And uh, he is now part of our fighter squadron. And remember, we only have about one open spot, so... So I hope this kind of explains a little bit more about the freighter. So keep in mind, you cannot upgrade them. Maybe in future updates and patches in the game, that will be an option. Whatever you pick, you're kind of stuck with until you buy another one. Right now, we will still get the mission to rescue the freighter after three hours of play and five warps, even though you already have a freighter. And that will give you a chance to actually rescue an S-class freighter but they will not give it to you for free anymore. In that case, you have to trade it in. And I think an S-Class Freighter right now would cost probably about 125, 150 million. So that's why a lot of people skip that first Freighter and keep um, doing that mission. Even using, uh, what is it called, saves coming. To redo that mission and uh, until they finally have the S-Class. So they keep repeating that mission over and over and over until the S-Class. So, that is another option. But for this playthrough, I, I honestly don't care. I will just want to show how we build the freighter up, and you'll see that in the next episodes. Alright guys, um, I would say thank you for watching, and have a great day.